very clearly um, had a problem with not putting in early aggression. Do 4AC just once again go for the late game? So they can take a couple of different routes to this. They can find ways to control the anti-mage, disable him to lock him down and really inhibit his impact in the game, or they can go for something even harder, as anti-mage uh, probably starts to tape around 45-50 minutes. Uh, for now, they'll keep their options open by picking up the Rubik, a great hero against all three of these guys, and even uh, against the Queen of Pain as well. Um, but one hero in particular that I've been seeing a little bit more recently, very, very recently in the North American scene, Alchemist has actually been a really good counter to the anti-mage. As anti-mage has started to prosper. Alchemist has been picked up against him, I think, three different games. All three that I cast were 100% win rate. So, uh, just the neg the fact that Antimage is vulnerable to physical damage and Alchemist is all about that, as well as the fact that Alchemist kind of out-temples the AM by getting, you know, a couple thousand net worth ahead very early on. I, I think that there's some potential with that kind of a composition. Mm, Rubik Queen of Payton picked up for Monkey Freedom Fighters, offering that mid-game Temple Controller matched up against the Lena, most likely. We'll, uh, we'll see if actually 4 AC are a little bit more likely to run this as a 4-position Lena, right? Because they're, they're being able to pair it with mm -hmm. the Rubik. It's always nice to run the 4-position Lena if you have a setup stuff. Yeah, I think that that's, it's about 50-50 still. I think that Midlina is really strong, but up against Queen of Pain and Earthshaker, it might be a little bit too difficult for her because you get the Fisher Shadow Strike. Uh, you can't really immediately respond with the Light Strike Array, and that really puts you on the back foot in terms of trading hits. So I think they're a little bit afraid to run the Lina mid, and as you mentioned, there's a lot of synergy there for this their support duo. So I think they'd be pretty happy with a of kind of a more... Yeah, I don't know if they go for the Visage still, so they're, they want to give that one another go, and uh, it's actually going to be in the hands of the four anchors this time around. So still, uh, I guess the main point of emphasis here is the right-click damage from the familiars, and then again, the medal effectiveness of the medallion or the solar crest. Yeah, particularly again, someone like Animage who is um, very often not wanting to go for an MKB. Um, you know, he picks up the Manta, he's looking at Butterfly or Heart, maybe a BKB, depending on the game. He, he doesn't usually look for MKB because he has all these other items he has to go for first, such as like, you know, Abyssal is another example. So I think the Solar Crest actually has a, a lot of value here, and I like 4 ASC's pickup. And then this, as you said, it leaves the, the Lena mid, which allows you to be able to pick up the you know the early uh, Agadem Scepter, which is super valuable versus the Animage. I was with you though in the concern about the Earthshaker and Queen of Pain dual lane, um, not necessarily dual lane, but the the rotating of the Earthshaker, maybe you know catching the Lena off guard that one time, and then it's just the Queen of Pain just takes over the lane from there. Yeah, I, I think that's a real thing to be concerned about, especially adding in the Spirit Breaker to the mix of things. We're actually going to be seeing. Spirit Breaker taking the off lane here. That would leave, obviously, the Dazzle Earthshaker support. At four anchors, though, they're going to be picking up the Dazzle Visage combo, which, uh, although with the timing window of it is nerfed to only when the aura is active, is still probably one of the best synergies you can find in terms of numbers in the game. So we have actually seen four anchors have run this uh, Drow. Uh, I thought pretty recently, but I might have been looking at Monkey's Freedom Fighters, who were doing the same. Yeah, the Drow got picked up. Uh, looking at it here, okay, no, I could have sworn I was looking at a matchup. Might have been the previous one that you were casting, but one of these, a uh, couple teams are picking up draw more frequently, and uh, we'll see if she really fit the best. A little bit, a uh, lot of synergy with the ranged damage dealers here. Yeah. All right, starting things off here. Matt immediately going to go for that aggressive TP out and place uh, an early laning phase ward. Most likely, 4AC did not respond with an off laner TP of their own. Um, so they have the clockwork who will be spotted out as he makes his way into the jungle. And probably zoned out entirely by Matt at this point. So Trixie's not going to get the block on the pool. Pretty important, obviously, uh, if you're running a four-position Earthshaker to get that extra source of farm. He's not really a hero that wants to be um, wants to fall behind. He needs that arcane boots. Needs that blink dagger. And obviously, the levels are pretty critical. Though he's picked up the boots, so very likely to see him roam around, perhaps spending a lot more time in the dual off lane, um, just to be able to ensure um, the spear breaker that early level two. We were talking about that earlier. 
Yeah, there's definitely a lot of importance on that, but he's only got one clarity to work with. So the impact of the Earthshaker uh, is a little bit less the less more less clarities you have because you can't just continue to Fisher block the wave. It looks like level one, he'll just uh, Fisher block to start it off and go right back to the fountain, and that'll make up for the issue a little bit. But of course, that does sacrifice any potential to disrupt the top Mountain Rune, which will be going to Nemphi on the Lena mid. He's actually getting a healing salve out as well. So he should be in a pretty good position to contest the Queen of Pain, kind of blow for blow. Arise? Wait. Uh oh oh oh! Never mind, never mind, never Because he's got the the <laughs> potion coming in. He because he went for the three tangos build. So I was just like, all of a sudden I see him drop one of those shared tangos, and I'm like, wait, wait, what, what's happening? But that's because. Three branches means that uh, he doesn't actually have the inventory space to hold one of those. <laughs> yeah, this is actually great for Nemphi, though. Look at this opener from him. If he, not for the Earthshaker, this would be like him doing amazing work. Instead, he's going to be actually feeding the first blood. So that's that's the difference there. Like, he could do so much damage to Arise. In fact, he almost kills him. He does kill him post-mortem. But yeah. it's a huge difference between getting the kill first or second. So it's like that H trade could easily have allowed Lena to at least take out Queen of Pain's health like 60% of the way and force her to back off and heal. Instead, with the contribution of the Airshaker, as we built it up in the draft, Yapsor sets up a rise for great success here in mid. Yeah, he actually doesn't bring anything extra into lane, which is a little bit surprising to me. Um, I thought maybe he would, like, complete the, the wand or something like that, but he keeps the same amount. He's just going for the, the faster bottle, which uh, Nymphie is still going to be able to get the bottle ahead of him. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, and guys. Less, yeah, and I mean... less and less. Oh. Another Fisher block, Nymphie. He's now caught. Blink over to the side. Arise able to dodge the light strike ray and Nymphi is dead. Once again, he just goes for a little bit of CS, but ends up feeding away yet another kill. This time around, unable to get the kill on Arise, who will now have his bottle. Trixie comes forth. Cogs push back onto uh, Arise, just trying to make sure that he does pick up the full amount of golden experience while Valina is gone. Unfortunately, he's died you know, in such short span of time, two different times, that he doesn't need to have a teepee to get back in the lane. It's still on cooldown. So he is going to be very far behind the Queen of Pain now. Yeah, and that's just the Earthshaker's potential here in the mid matchup. I'm actually surprised they didn't emphasize more uh, vision for the Lena to try to deal with this appropriately, as it just seems like a, a very clear limitation. As we, we are kind of built, talking to about it just uh, halfway through the draft, it, it's definitely a very common thing to happen uh, with all this assistance. And now with the Dazzle on top of it, it's going to really hurt. <laughs> there's no Poison Touch, but there's still the Fisher, and this looks to be the third death of Nemphi. Yeah, they're uh, not going to be able to fully commit there, and it looks like the Tangle will actually keep him alive. So, unfortunately, the Light Strike Array just clipping Arise prevented that kill from happening. He also had the Dazzle, who didn't um, stay close to Nemphi. He could have gone for, like, a Shadow Wave kill or something like that with a Fisher Block, but um, they didn't do that either. So, Nemphi does manage to escape despite the two-man rotation. So, 4AC barely narrowly, narrowly uh, dodging an even greater lead for a rise over this leader. <clears throat> Sing Sing pretty much a suicide here. Uh, he literally just charged the Visage for like a hundred damage, and then he had absolutely no way to escape from the 3v1 <laughs> that followed. Yeah, maybe he expected the Rubik to still be metal, but that was certainly not the case. Charge down makes for an easy kill. Trixie at the bottom lane, uh, in part because he was able to collect some of the middle lane experience, but also because his lane was pushed out. He is almost level four and has boots, so his his off lane is not going terribly. Silver lining for four ASC. He's going to challenge uh, Mad here as best as possible. Trixie does not actually have the battery salt, and he's just looking for really go good Cogs pushback, but he is going to be charged. Yapsor is going to go for the Fisher block, will be able to get uh, a good one, actually, and Trixie is done for. So Arise even joining in on that kill. Monkey Freedom Fighters really not afraid to group up early. Jeez, they're, they're committing, like, even the Queen of Pain coming over just says so much about the way Monkey Freedom Fighters are playing this game.
Yeah, and just Yapsor is really making a huge impact this game. Already three assists for himself. Only starting with the one clarity, but the boots movement seems to have made up for the, the lack of clarity. It's because he's always in the right position. He's always getting those key fissures just barely, and, and that's a huge contribution for the early game. I mean, this Earthshaker is already doing great in experience and levels. He's uh, enabled both of his cores to do some great success here. And the Antimage has got great battle theory timing as a result. There's no way that they're going to rotate everybody down to gank this Antimage. You would need the Drow, the, the Rubik, and one more. And that just seems like too big of an investment to stop this Antimage from progressing. Yeah, they. I mean, they could do something like an early five-man push at the bottom lane, which you would, you're going to probably do with the Drow Ranger or, uh, anyway. With, um, you know, once you have that level six and... And just looking to be able to take those towers, but uh, you're right. There's definitely not going to be that kind of like ganking potential out from 4 AAC. If they if they show up five people bottom, I highly doubt they're going to get the kill on the AM. And at at best, they'll just force him out of lane where he'll go uh, jungle or something while his tower is taken. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, level six is probably that real critical point. I, I agree with you on that. Like the marksmanship is going to be coming out for the drow, but I would say the level six on the supports is just as important. Getting spell steal for Rubik this game will change how OKC can actually play in the fights, and then the visage getting a couple more levels here for the familiars is uh, just as important. So all around, the ultimates are going to be the key to a victory, or at least coming back in this game for the four anchors. Getting closer and closer to the Drow Visage combination, they have that one ultimate ready to go. And they're already putting a bit of pressure. Fortunately, Beaver Knight is tanking off as a Spirit Breaker, especially to physical damage that he should be okay. But there is a rotation out, a smoke rotation out from the Dazzle. And then you have the other two heroes coming in from behind, Yapsor and Arise. Uh, doesn't look like they're going to find their opening here. It's too bad they have the Sonic Wave too, so they could easily burst down a hero. Maybe, maybe they'll dive the tower. But it seems like 4AC know what could be happening here. Planet very, very reserved. They don't have the gust, which is probably the most important aspect of this exchange. It allows the Queen of End to get very aggressive in terms of diving. But as soon as the Sonic Wave comes out, she's probably going to eat the full Soul Assumption. So it uh, looks like they don't want to commit fully. They were just hoping for an easier like Fisher Block pick where the boogie gets caught out away from the tower. Instead, uh, it's just going to be them rotating back and getting back to the farming game. Selena so now has uh, her level 6. Uh, it's actually on uh, even experience levels with the Queen of Pain. So maybe we'll see a kill with the Laguna Blade coming out soon. Uh, the Draw Ranger and Visage return to lane now that they see the Queen of Pain middle and start farming up once again. Paris is still free farming, and it looks like he's going to be going for the Battle of Fury first, not actually stopping for <laughs> the um, the treads at all. So you're probably looking at a 13-minute Battle Fury without treads on average. Um, but at this rate, you know he's totally free farming. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it at like 12 minutes. Yeah, it's insanely fast, and this is just going to make it much more difficult for four anchors to start addressing him directly. You, you already have a lot that needs to come together in order to kill him, but if he's just going camp to camp to camp, unless you predict him and are waiting for him when he blinks to a camp, uh, you're not going to be finding any easy kills. The Yule Scepter might change that a little bit, because uh, Lena is approaching that relatively quickly, despite her rocky start. But it's it's not going to be there before the anti-mage starts really getting into high gear as far as the farm game goes. So I think Fornicker's game plan should shift a little bit, get clockwork involved, get a hook shot play, get a kill. It looks like he wants to go on the Earthshaker 1v1. Actually, should be able to get it. Just Haster in itself is a great uh, rune to have in this situation. Uh, I'm not entirely positive, though. This is only a level 1 battery salt. Yeah, so I think could just easily hit through the cogs and be okay. Yeah, he's... Yeah. With the, the maxed out rocket build, you limit, uh, you really cut down so much on your kill potential. So tricks to actually also, just waste a lot of time. Are pretty much worthless. Yeah, the robe of the magi will give him the mana he needs to actually even have a chance at that. But tranquil boot robe opener is probably the the least aggressive opener you can go on the work here. Mm -hmm. Sing Sing has a thousand gold. Do you think he, uh, if he could get it? 500 more golds pick up the hand of Midas for this game? 
Yeah, definitely. I think this is definitely a Midas game. That you're already going to be losing a lot of ability to farm because the anti-mage is going to be taking up so much. The Queen of Pain probably taking the rest. But if you can just get make sure that you get the kind of gold density efficiency value out of that hand of Midas, you can really build yourself up to your level 11 and 16 faster. But at the same time, that greed will hurt your other cores in its own way, although it does help you a lot. And he decides to go for the team build, which is just going to be tankier and more frontline oriented. Yeah, I, I like this, especially seeing as you're dealing with a lot of early aggression pushing Ooh. power. Nice block up, but Yapsor is going to be caught by Trixie. So the Fisher was good, the hook shot was better. And Ocasia will help contribute to that kill. In the meantime, Paris is aggressively pushing forward, trying to chip down his tower by cutting through the creep wave. He already has the broadsword, all is left he is now the, um, the, the man apart. Of the perseverance void stone. That's the that's the word I was looking for. But it won't take him long to get that, and uh, of course, then the split push really begins. The the farming in the jungle will be uh, pretty swift as well. We've got what a double stack here for the central hard camp, and a triple stack that has been scouted out by the clockwork for the western hard camp on the radiant side. So um, good gold for the anti mage, and even better the experience for the supports as the Absor can just kind of sit around here and, and watch a quadruple stack die. Yeah, actually, uh, I'm a little bit surprised, but he completes the Perseverance. Thought he would go for the other, more expensive item first. Uh, Rocket comes in, it's a little bit too late. Arise is still going to be able to get all of these last hits. Now, his item build is actually of uh, a bit interest to me. Because I was thinking, for a reason, I can't click on him. Uh, I was thinking that a items would be really valuable when you're dealing with this five-man push from 4AC. Just to be able to throw it out, delay the push. Um, you know, every 40 seconds have that uh, ability to almost instant give the creep wave. Mm -hmm. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, I mean, obviously the items has a lot of value in that context, but... Uh, I don't... I'm not sure. It's it's a little bit difficult because you're worried about uh, a lot of spells flying at you. For example, if you get caught by Alina Yules, then you're probably just going to die outright without uh, much. But if you just go for the Raj P and rely on your Earthshaker to Fisher and cancel out the Light Striker animation, then you can you can still make that work for you. Matt's going to be caught here. Not much Arise can really do about that one. Meanwhile, bottom lane, they're actually going to catch someone. Uh, Fisher gets laid out. Sing Sing trying to turn on OKC, uh, but that's not going to happen. He just gets bursted down by Boogie and Valix. That damage duo is too much for him to handle. And Paris is up now at the top lane, as we were kind of talking about before. The five-band push comes in the bottom lane. Well, Paris just goes up to top lane to farm. And this will be a 13-minute battle fury. Is. He only needs one more creep to complete it. Mm -hmm. And in mid, we're actually going to see a lot of damage come out on Nemphi. Nice combo there with the Sonic Wave. Nemphi's one hit from death. Magic one, I think, just delays the inevitable. The reach and rune. Are you serious? Could that? No. Oh. Uh, so close. But at the same time, Trixie? No, he's not going to get away. Arise able to catch up to him. Still, though, they got Roshan. It was a really greedy by 4 AC. I was going to say, I was, like, I was a little bit confused by them pushing in the middle lane so aggressively while doing Roshan at the same time. Like, obviously, Roshan being taken is thanks in part to the amount of room you created in the middle lane, but you also fed away quite a bit. Where I, I feel like 4AAC were in a comfortable enough position that they could have, like, pushed down that middle tower and gone back to do Roshan without MFF interrupting them. I mean, the, the AM is not ready to fight. The Earthshaker doesn't have Blink Dagger yet. I highly doubt they're going to be ready to contest Roshan. Yeah, it, it does work out in that capacity, but yeah, it, they kind of had not been so aggressive in their split movements. I think what they wanted to do was play some mind games where if the enemy is pushing as two in mid, they're probably not going Roche, but now we actually see anti mage. There's that Yules we were looking for, and just to make sure they Laguna, uh, it's not that long of a cooldown, and he does have plenty of mana with that regen rune. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> what a nice regen rune to have. Five mm -hmm. to six down. The a 13 minute right battle there. fury doesn't mean much if you keep getting picked off. And 4AAC are actually limiting a lot of control of the map now by uh, looking to take these tier two towers now. 
Yeah, and they can definitely push on this uh, pretty hardcore. We're going to look if Drought Ranger has the aura, not using it just yet because they know this tower is secured. But if they, there was any contest from Monkey Freedom Fighters, they would pop the aura and just have that much more potential. Lita already does so much right click damage thanks to just the one level on Fiery Soul a little, little bit later on. We'll really see the power of that attack speed. But um, if they can take down a tier 3 tower this early, I would be very surprised, but they're getting it. I mean, it's down to 400 HP. Monkey Freedom Fighters haven't made the initiation just yet, and the tower will end up falling here. 14 and a half minutes in, 4 AC, I'm sure, are going to back up now. But they still have the Aegis, I mean, if they want to, especially if they find a pick off here, Mad is going to be taken out. Now, Silence onto a rise. Uh, Beaver Knight actually comes in from the side, but he gets bursted down. Okay, never mind. Forget Tier 3 Tower. We'll take that, and we'll take a melee Rax. Absolutely. They do 300 physical DPS just from the birds alone with uh, the aura active, so they take the Tier 3 no problem. And now that Monkey Freedom Fighters have lost a few lives in the process, it looks like it just might be a lane. I mean, the anti mage can't fight now. He can push, but he cannot fight. And we are just going to see one Rax and an easy getaway. Yeah, I mean, they still have the Aegis for so long, they can uh, afford to, like, 5 band top, take the, the Tier 2 there, middle lane, take a Tier 2 there as well. And once they bracked in all that gold and they have uh, certain things like, okay, it is an SNY on Boogie. Um, maybe he goes for the BKB next. We have the Aghanim Scepter that'll be finished up on Nemphi, I'm sure, in a short amount of time, especially if they continue to take these towers. Um, they still got a full two minutes to just bully MFF away from these objectives. And uh, soon enough, Memphis is going to have that Aghanim Scepter. Like, all this gold translates into a lot of potential items for the team, and specifically Linus are going to be the most interesting. Already having the potential to kill Anti-Mage uh, with the Yules combo, but get that Laguna Blade in play, and no matter what item buys, Paris can't feel safe. Radiant's top tower has fallen. Middle tower, they have the Precision Aura up in 8 seconds, but they don't really need it for the Tier 2. Maybe they'll try and poke uphill with the Aegis still intact in that next aura. See if he holds on to it. Yeah, he is. So, oh, uh -oh. shot goes out. They're able to catch Mad, who just gets a little bit too far forward there. And will be taken out. In fact, Shallow Grave is going to be stolen by OKC. Meaning that Aegis is going to be uh, not the only saving grace for Boogie when he pushes uphill now. Mm -hmm. This is their last creep wave, though. That anti mage is going to be creep cutting it, so they're just going to try to clear it out. Yeah, they go uphill, Light Strike Array lands on two, and once again, Spirit Breaker just gets popped, and Arise goes down as well. Couldn't blink, and there goes GG. Oh! What a great ultimate from Nemphi, almost finishing off four heroes in the process, but Nemphi barely survives, and the GG was already called, so... Oh, that's, that's it. I, I kind of feel like that might have been a little early, man. I mean, the, the yeah. anti-mage has some turn potential there. Well, unfortunately, Monkey Freedom Fighters, not a great day for them, it seems, as they're all done. Very short series. A 17-minute GG call. Blaze, thanks for joining me for this last series of the night. Uh, do you have any shout-outs to give or anything?